Good morning. Good morning. So glad you could be here. Glad you could join us to worship our Lord and Savior today. Today we celebrate a special event called Epiphany. The word Epiphany means to show or reveal. Today in God's Word, Jesus is going to show that He came to be the Savior of all people and reveal His salvation for all. That word salvation simply means to be saved, to be on the road to heaven. That Jesus, by His death on the cross, brought salvation to all people. Um, I talked to someone just a couple of minutes ago before worship about whether or not you can teach old dogs new tricks. And he assured me, you can. They just need the right reinforcement. Uh, we're actually going to have some new tricks, if you will, in our service today. Uh, we have some new musical settings to some of the songs that are regularly part of our worship. The words that sound familiar, Lord have mercy, glory be to God, Christ Lamb of God, holy, 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 but the music is different. It's part of the new music that is coming out in our new hymnal. We understand that change is difficult and that making this transition might take a little time. We have had some individuals who have practiced some of these new musical settings. We have other members who are familiar with these uh, settings from other congregations. We pray that that will be uh, enough to give us a boost as we make the transition to some of these new songs. If you just want to listen today, or next week and the week after that, that's totally cool as we make this transition. Uh, you'll notice in the service folder that for some of these songs, it will say the cantor will sing certain parts. That will be our, our lead singer uh, over by the organ. Then the congregation is invited to join in the rest. Again, you're welcome to join in. You're welcome to just listen. I'm pretty confident that over time, as we hear these musical settings again and again, you really will come to enjoy them and you'll come to appreciate uh, a richness and variety in our worship on this Epiphany Day and going forward. You find the order of service printed in the service folder. We will begin our service with the singing of the order. <laughs>
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless worry and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the glory to God. Please take note of the instructions in the service book. Jesus was born 
half a world away from us, 2,000 years ago. Isn't it amazing that across this time and distance, we continue to celebrate his birth and rejoice in his salvation? Our scripture readings today will show us that God's salvation has always been for all people of all time. We read the first lesson from 1 Kings chapter 10. The Queen of Sheba comes to Solomon and is brought to faith, confesses that faith in the Lord. When the Queen of Sheba heard about the fame of Solomon and his relationship to the Lord, she came to test Solomon with hard questions, arriving at Jerusalem with a very great caravan with camels carrying spices, large quantities of gold and precious stones. She came to Solomon and talked with him about all that she had on her mind. Solomon answered all her questions. Nothing was too hard for the king to explain to her. When the queen of Sheba saw all the wisdom of Solomon, the palace he had built, the food on his table, the seating of his officials, the attending servants in their robes, his cupbearers, and the burnt offerings he made at the temple of the Lord, she was overwhelmed. She said to the king, The report I heard in my own country about your achievements and your wisdom is true. But I did not believe these things until I came and saw with my own eyes. Indeed, not even half was told to me in wisdom and wealth. You have far exceeded the report I heard. How happy your people must be. How happy your officials who continually stand before you and hear your wisdom. Praise be to the Lord your God who has delighted in you and placed you on the throne of Israel. Because of the Lord's eternal love for Israel, he has made you king to maintain justice and righteousness. The word of the Lord. We'll continue with the song. Salvation is for all. Then Paul and Barnabas answered them boldly, 
We have to speak the word of God to you first. Since you reject it and do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and honored the word of the Lord. And all who were appointed for eternal life believed the word of the Lord spread through the whole region. This is God's word. Please stand out of joy and respect for the words of the gospel. Alleluia. We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. Alleluia. The gospel is from Matthew chapter 2. The Magi also were people who came from a great distance to worship the Lord. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, near the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, and the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they return to their country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became holy human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Take note for the hymn of the day. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3.
salvation is for all people. Amen. When I was a student at the seminary, I had the privilege to work with two churches on the south side of Milwaukee that were in heavily Spanish-speaking neighborhoods. And a classmate and I had the joy of knocking on people's doors and inviting them to study the Word of God together, usually in the Spanish language. We were actually blessed that there was someone right across the street from one of the churches where we were serving who was excited to hear the Word of the Lord. We started having in-home Bible studies, and on one day we were coming out of our Bible study from this home, and across the street was one of the church members. And we started chatting with this gentleman a little bit. It wasn't too long in the conversation before he said, don't waste your time with those people. They won't ever come to church. What do you think about that attitude? Don't waste your time with those people. They won't come to church. Now, maybe trying to be as charitable as possible. Maybe this gentleman had been witnessing to his neighbors and talking to them about Jesus. Maybe there was a much more obvious reality that his neighbors spoke Spanish and the church didn't have a Spanish language service at the time. But you know, my, my, my friend and I, even as future preachers, we were just, we were caught off guard. We actually kind of speechless. Well, what do you say? How do you react? Is that what God thinks about us? Ah, don't waste your time on them. Is that what your parents thought about you? Oh, I'm not going to waste my time. They don't sit still. They're not going to listen. I'm glad my parents didn't think that about me. And isn't it comforting to know God doesn't think that about us? He says you are worth the price of his only son. You know, God puts all people in the same category. All people are sinners, and so all people are saved by the blood of Jesus. You know, it's just people that are very good today at creating all these divisions, right? There's the good people who go to church and the bad people who don't go to church. There's the people that are worth your time, the people not worth your time, right? There's divisions on race, divisions on politics, all kinds. God says, no division. My salvation is for all people. Once we were divided from God because of our sin, but now Jesus has saved us from our sins and put us all together. God's salvation is for all people. We meet a couple of preachers in this part of God's word, one named Paul, one named Barnabas. And I think they were on kind of a roller coaster they were preaching in a city that was called Pisidian Antioch. And in that city, they went to the church, the, the synagogue, and they preached the word of the Lord. And we're told that people were excited to hear the word of the Lord and invited them to come back the next week. And the very next week, it says the entire city showed up to hear the word of the Lord. How do you feel if the entire city of Monroe showed up here today to hear the word of the Lord? We wouldn't have enough room. We certainly wouldn't be able to maintain social distance in any way. But I think you'd be pretty excited, right? Well, except here was the sad truth. Many of the people who came didn't come to hear and believe the word. They came to reject and despise. We are told not only that they rejected the word of the Lord, but they heaped abuse on Paul and Barnabas for daring to speak the word of the Lord. How are Paul and Barnabas going to react to all these people who are there heaping abuse on them? What did God's word tell us? They spoke the word of the Lord boldly. They spoke without fear. When there was a huge crowd to hear the word of the Lord, they spoke without fear. When there was a huge crowd heaping abuse on them, they spoke without fear because they knew it was the word of the Lord. Right? You hear that, that repeated three times in just these four verses, right? They preached the word of the Lord. They honored the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord spread. It wasn't about the preachers. It was about the word of the Lord. So please don't misunderstand Paul and Barnabas when boldly and without fear they say, we're going to move on to some other people. 
See, they weren't saying, you people aren't worth our time, you're not going to come to church. These were the people who came to church, but they came to church specifically to reject the word of the Lord. And notice how clear Paul and Barnabas are about that. They said, you rejected the word of the Lord. Sadly, these people rejected it for themselves. They pushed it away from themselves. They despised the word of the Lord for themselves. The original language for this word rejected conveys the idea that these people did something on their own for themselves to themselves. God is not to blame that some rejected his word. God is not to blame that there were those who pushed God's word away from themselves and heaped abuse on the preachers. But here's what might be the most striking thing about that, is the people who did this rejected the word of the Lord of the people you would least expect. Because they were the good, the, 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 the church-going people. They were from the Jewish nation, the nation from which Jesus himself came. They, they were from a culture where you didn't decide if you were going to go to church or not. It was just expected you were going to go. They had a whole day set aside every week just to go to God's house and hear his word. I mean, they had God's word and God's laws from birth. They had every spiritual advantage you could imagine. And yet, they rejected the word of the Lord. That strike close to home at all? Were you blessed? Like I was to grow up in a Christian home where you had God's word from birth. And Sunday morning you didn't have this long discussion about whether or not you were going to go to church. You just knew you were going to go. And have there been times when that familiarity with the word of God is bred contempt? And maybe even easily leads to rejection of the very word of God that gives us eternal life. There's kind of a puzzling phrase here. At least I was puzzled when I first read it. When the Apostle Paul said, you do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life. What does this mean? Because he says it like it's a bad thing, right? You don't consider yourselves worthy, so I'm going to move on to some other people. Because, I mean, honestly, my first reaction to this is, well, I don't consider myself worthy of eternal life. I know I haven't been a good enough person to live up to God's holy, perfect standard. Would I fall into this category? You know, and we can let the devil convince us you're not good enough. Your sins are too sordid. Your past is too prevalent. Too many skeletons in your closet. God could never love you you're not worth it. See, and that's really the meaning of that word worthy is worth it. Paul told these people, you don't think eternal life is worth it for yourselves. But that start to hit even closer to home. I, 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 I don't have time to think about eternal life because I've got so many things to do in this life. I don't have time to read my Bible because i got so many shows on my Netflix list. I don't, I don't have time to be thinking about the next life. Do you know the list of things i got to do right here and right now? And when we weigh out these things of this life versus eternal life, sadly too often we weigh that this life tips the scale. Rather than thinking about eternal life. Or we make the same Weighing on the balance scale, which is kind of the idea of this word worthy. Um, like my friend who lived across the street and who had that idea, most people are worthy. So I think he'd done some weighing and in his own mind said, Well, I'm worth it because I'm a good person. I go to church. But those people, they're not worth it. And you see, we're weighing by our own standards. And we consider it's not worth it. And we're sinning on every side. 
So we need God to shine the light. Not only or even primarily on our sins, but God shines the light on our Savior. That his salvation is for all. And when we shine the light on the cross, we see you are worth it. God said you are worth the blood of my only son. I considered you worthy that my son left heaven to come to earth, to die on a cross and bring salvation for all people. You are worth it. At any time we're tempted to weigh this and think, oh, this life, eternal life, look at the empty tomb. Jesus gives you eternal life. It lasts forever. That life is always worth it. Any sacrifice in this life does not compare to eternal life. Any suffering for the word of the Lord, how does that compare with eternal joy, with eternal glory? That's what Jesus won at that empty tomb. So we look at the cross, we look at the empty tomb, we see Jesus weighed and said, you're worth it. You're worth my energy, you're worth my time, you are worth my blood. And you see how the people reacted? Well, at least we're told the Gentiles. It says they were glad. And they were honoring the word of the Lord. And these words, like many others in these verses, say these things were happening over and over, again and again. That, that they were being glad continually. Because they knew God's salvation is for all, which includes me. It says, and they were honoring the word of the Lord. Notice that they were praising Paul. They were boasting about Barnabas. They were honoring the word of the Lord. And so, yes, the preacher said, don't praise the preacher. Honor the word of the Lord. Because it's the word of the Lord that proclaims salvation that is for all people. Because God's salvation is for all. To the ends of the earth. Very amazing, actually, how God used the rejection of his word by some to lead to the preaching of his word to others. Then we get to this other, perhaps, puzzling phrase. And all who were appointed for eternal life believed. So that might be puzzling this. Maybe you might think, well, did God appoint some and not appoint others? Well, what does this word appointed really mean? What's, what, what's going on here? Well, first let's look at that word appointed, and then we'll look at the, the contrast in the reaction to God's word. Okay. First, did this word appointed? You notice, uh, sorry, grammar lesson, it's in the passive voice, which means that someone else did something to these appointed people and for their benefit. Those who were appointed didn't do something to appoint themselves, or they didn't do something to get themselves appointed. It was God who did the appointing. This is all the work of God to appoint them and give them the gift of faith. And this word appointed has the picture of someone enjoys a new status that goes on and on and continues because it was given by God as a gift. Now can we see the contrast? Those appointed believed only because of God's action and solely to his glory. Those who rejected the word of the Lord, they did the rejecting and they alone bore the blame for their lack of faith. I know we put these two things side by side. It doesn't seem like they could both come from the same God. That when someone has faith in Jesus, God gets all the credit. And when someone does not have faith in Jesus, that person bears all the blame. But the Bible tells us those two things. They rejected it for themselves. Those who were appointed for eternal life believed. Maybe it's helpful to remember that the Bible talks about faith as a gift that God gives. I'm guessing maybe a few of you got a Christmas gift or two. When someone gave you the gift, 
and you gladly accepted it? Did you say, look at me, I accepted the gift, I should get some credit? No, you said thank you to the giver, and you gave the giver all the credit and all the glory for this wonderful gift. Now, if someone gives you a gift, you say, no, I don't want it, throw it away. Well, you bear the blame for having no benefit from that gift. Remember, God's salvation in this world. He wants all people to be saved. The person who is not saved, sadly, is only themselves in the world. But look at that summary of what happened at the end. The word of the Lord continued to spread throughout the region. And there's a fascinating epilogue, because even as the word of the Lord spread, and as believers continued to proclaim it, they continued to meet with rejection. And yet they were continually filled with joy, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Rejection couldn't stop the word of the Lord, because God's salvation is for all. The believers at the time of Paul didn't say, ah, those people aren't worth it, I'm not going to waste my time. God didn't consider you a waste of time. God doesn't consider anyone a waste of time. Don't let rejection of the word conclude that eh, maybe they're not worth it. Maybe even have a friend that you very specifically invited to join you for worship on Christmas and they said no. Don't give up. Every person is worth it because God's salvation is for all. Amen. Please stand. The service continues with the prayer of the church in the service hall. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God and Mary's Son, in the fullness of time, you came into our world to save us from sin and death. You ushered in the day of grace so long for him. Beloved Son of the Father, revered by the Magi, baptized by John, you came preaching and teaching, healing and comforting, forgiving and encouraging. You brought the light of life to those walking in the darkness and the joy of salvation to those who to death. Prince of Peace, shine like a beacon for us and the people of our world. Let the good news of salvation be heard in the remotest corners of the earth. Open our own lips to speak your name to those around us who still live without faith or hope. Arouse us and our missionaries to flood the world with the light of your gospel. Lord of the Church, let your peace rule our hearts that we may use our gifts to serve you and each other in willing gratitude and joy. Watch over our loved ones near and far that they may remember your love and rejoice in your salvation. Strengthen the faith of the sick and the disheartened. Give hope to those in despair and comfort those who mourn. Be gracious to all and lead us to reflect your love in everything we say and do. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Finally, bring us and all your believers to the heavenly home where we will stand in the full light of your glory, and with all your saints and angels, sing the everlasting song of triumph. We join in the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet that you give us to eat and to drink in this sacrament. We pray that through this precious gift of yourself, you will feed our faith, nourish our hope, and strengthen our love that we live as your people now and as your guests forever at the wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you in favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for the closing of the